Hello and welcome to the episode 261 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. For today's highlights, we have a concert in Dallas, two films to complete, and two recording sessions taking place. Let's see. On the 18th of September 1960, we have yet another instance of The Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performing an all-nighter at the Indra Club in Hamburg, West Germany. Fast forward four years, and in 1964, we find the Beatles on the top of their game. For the continuation of their first North American tour, the four played a one-show performance in front of 10,000 fans at the Dallas Memorial Auditorium, Dallas, Texas, on a stage three times taller than usual. On the 18th of September 1966, John Lennon and Beatles assistant Neil Aspinall left Paris, France, where they had spent a weekend with Paul McCartney and Beatles manager Brian Epstein, to travel to Carboneras, Spain, to continue the shooting of How I Won the War. The location, in hot and dusty southern Spain, was chosen to simulate the North African desert. John remained in Spain for several weeks, with Aspinall and his wife Cynthia, in a villa called Santa Isabel, just out of Almeria. The party shared the villa with How I Won the War main star, Michael Crawford and his family. Another film was being shot in 1967, the first real project with the Beatles at the helm. For the occasion, the Fabs and part of the cast of Magical Mystery Tour were at the Raymond Rouve Bar, a striptease club in Soho, London, for the filming of the scene in which all the male passengers of the coach watch stripper Jan Carson doing her show. In the final version of the film, the war censored cover Carson's breasts, a decision the Beatles took to avoid certain censorship from BBC and other broadcast companies. Talking about stripping, here's a stripped-down version of my call to action. Be fab and visit www.simonmas.com support to make sure that you do your bit to help our music-loving community grow. Thank you! On the 18th of September 1968, at some point during the day, George Harrison was interviewed by enemies Alan Smith in the Apple offices at 3 Savile Row, London. Smith had been one of the first London journalists to meet the Beatles in 1962, and his wife was working for Apple. The interview was published in Enemy and also broadcast, in an edited version, by BBC Radio 1 during Seen and Heard of the 28th of September, between 6.32 and 7.30 pm. In the afternoon, between 5 pm and 5 am, the Beatles were busy at the EMI Studios, recording Birthday, whose main riff Paul McCartney had introduced at the start of the session. The Fabs developed the song into Birthday during the course of the evening. They had already recorded 20 takes of the rhythm track by 8.30 pm, when the band, Yoko Ono, Patty Boyd and producer Chris Thomas took a break to go to Paul's house, very close to the studios, and watch The Girl Can't Help It, the classic rock and roll film, broadcast on BBC Two until 10.40 pm. Returning to the studio by 11 pm, Birthday was completed with overdubs of tambourine, piano, hand claps, backing vocals, with the help of Yoko Ono and Patty Boyd, and Paul's lead vocals, all recorded on take 19. The song was then mixed in mono from 4.30 to 5.00 am. Let's close the episode with Paul McCartney participating to the recording session for Bad Fingers Rock of All Ages, B-side of the band's Come and Get It single. Paul had written Come and Get It and likely gave a hand to the completion of Rock of All Ages too, although he was not credited for his input. He also played piano during the recording and sang guide vocals with Bad Fingers Tom Evans, although 
Paul's vocals were later replaced by Evans. Now it's time to close the episode. Join us tomorrow for another gigantic 1969 setback, The Loss of Northern Songs, a big headache that hopefully will shed further light on why the Beatles did break up. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.